G'day folks, hope you've been well, and you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it's been a little while since we've done a tier list video, and I just have a bit of a hankering for one. Sometimes you just gotta go back to the classics, you know? And I think I know just the topic to look at today. My previous tier list focused on some of the big boys, the endgame monsters and big fancy creatures that are the faces of the series, I suppose, when we did the flagship and the final boss list. But there's far more to the Monster Hunter series than just the big guys. So let's flip the script a bit and look at some monsters that aren't quite as difficult, for the most part at least. Out of all the weird and wonderful types of monsters that the series has to offer, none are as synonymous with the early game as the bird wyverns are. A class of monster that has been around since the series inception, bird wyverns are just as much a core part of the series as flying wyverns and elder dragons are, and they play a vital role in their own right. But what is a bird wyvern? Well, it's any monster that the devs assign that classification to, I suppose, but more specifically, they are monsters that have bird-like features, small to medium builds, and are, for the most part, as I said, not terribly powerful. But that's not to say they can't be, not by a long shot. By and large, bird wyverns are lumped into two subgroups, the flying bird wyverns and the raptor bird wyverns, the former of which are usually larger and have functional wings, and the latter of which are usually much smaller and form packs with an alpha as their leader. So there's a quick little rundown of what makes a bird wyvern a bird wyvern so let's get stuck in and rank some shall we i am pig Shinge. don't forget to like and subscribe and this is the ultimate bird wyvern tier list all right i got gotcha. you <laughs> bazinga <laughs> first things first housekeeping ground rules parameters whatever you want to call them each monster will be ranked based on how much i like their design their fights and how well they feel their role in their respective game i'll also be grouping the raptor bird wyverns together with their small and large forms counting as one entry because they come as a package deal in game and i would just be saying the same things over and over again if i didn't do it that way so for example everything i say about the velocidrome applies to the velocipray as well i also won't be mentioning monster variations like subspecies and variants because I would just be repeating myself a whole bunch as well, and I don't feel like my opinions on the variations differs very much from the base forms, for the bird wyverns at least. And lastly, I won't be talking about the frontier or other spin-off bird wyverns because, like previous lists, I haven't gone up against them ever, and as such, don't have any valuable input to provide outside of, yeah, this thing looks neat. Alright, that's about all, let's ride. First up are the OG Raptor Bird Wyverns, and some of the very first aggressive monsters you come across in the original Monster Hunter game, the Velocidrome. Given my first Monster Hunter game was in fact the original one, these guys do hold a bit of sentimental value to them, even though they are the epitome of small monsters griefing you in the older games. Though iconic, they are about as basic as they come, and I wouldn't say the design is particularly riveting, they do a solid job of introducing you to aggressive monsters and the concept of taking on multiple monsters at once, but their incessant jumping and biting with very little variance means they have been the cause of many a rage quit in my gaming past, as I'm sure they have been for many people watching this video. It was nice to see them get a fresh coat of paint in Sunbreak, but I think that these guys sit pretty firmly in the B tier for me. Next up is the Velocidrome, but like, worse? Gendrome is definitely my least favourite of the original group of bird wyverns because of two things. Paralysis coupled with the heat-seeking jumps. Early on in the series, when your hunter was considerably less mobile than they are now, it was almost a given that a small monster off-screen was going to get the jump on you. And when it comes to bird wyverns, I mean literally jump on you. Quests in the desert and swamp mats would turn into a chore because you would regularly get paralysed by a gen prey you didn't notice, and then smacked around by the bigger monster that is also still there that you're trying to fight. Gendrome still holds that sort of endearing old-school quality that my nostalgia goggles focus on, but that's the only thing keeping them out of the D tier. They get a generous C tier placement. And then we come to the Iodrome, and well, I just have less of a problem with poison than paralysis, so they're immediately higher than the Gendrome. Iodrome also has completely different physical features, like a drastically different head shape, and lack of enlarged claws on its hands and feet, and skin that seems almost like a frog's. It's pretty interesting as far as early designs go, but there's no universe where it should be any higher than a three star quest, so these guys are going in the B tier. All right, now this, this is what I'm talking about. The Yarn Kutku is an absolute classic monster and in my mind is just as iconic as our pal Rathalos. The very first flying bird wyvern in the very first Monster Hunter game, Kutku was also the first monster to completely warm me personally and make me stop playing when I was a little kid. The full story of which is in one of my previous videos, I'll pop the link in the top right theme. This is the monster that immediately comes to mind when I think bird wyvern and I don't ever see that changing really. Kutku has a ton of personality as well from that weird 
weird little laugh it does during its taunt, to its charge animation, to its little tantrum it throws as it becomes enraged, it rides the line of goofiness so well without going overboard, and is firmly cemented in my mind, whether it's sentimental or not, as one of the best bird wyverns in the series. Get that chicken in the S tier, and let's move on. Ah, I see. The highest highs and the lowest lows in this tier list. Gypsurus is one of those monsters that has forever torn a piece of my soul from my body that I will never, ever get back. For those unfamiliar with this big rubber turkey, Gypsurus is just as old as the Kutku is, it uses poison, it has a flash to stun you, it plays dead, it's high and is made of rubber so you bounce off, and I absolutely hate it. In the first Monster Hunter game, back when it was a lawless wasteland, Gypsurus could be found in the swamp, where it would inhabit zones that usually were full of Bulfango. Now, yes, my disdain may be due in part to those Bulfango, but there's more to it. In these zones, it would also do this attack where it would run around the entire area in a set pattern, not even targeting the hunter at all, with the whole process taking something like 30 seconds, and it could just spam this over and over again. I think I legitimately timed out my first Gypsurus quest because my little 10 year old brain could not deal with it and that has stuck with me to this very day to ignite a burning hatred for this monster inside of me get down in the dt gypsurus i'll hear no complaints or counterpoints my decision is final moving on all right now that i've gotten that out of the way let's take a look at a bird wyvern that breaks the mold a little bit and is actually kind of hard garuga is a notorious monster in the history of the series but just how difficult it once was originally introduced in monster hunter freedom sort of Look, it's a bit complicated because technically the original one was the Scarred Garuga and the normal one wasn't there until Freedom Unites, but technically they were just the same monster until Iceborne came along and officially considered the Scarred one as a variant, thus retconning it to be the only monster that have its variant debut before it did. Uh... What was I talking about? All right, upon Garuga's first introduction, you could actually repel it similar to an Elder Dragon, and it would retain the damage done and everything next time you fought it, which is kind of insane for a bird wyvern. I think it's safe to say it's a fan favorite for one reason or another, and it's a fantastic example of the diversity bird wyverns can demonstrate while still being wholly recognizable as a member of the class. Yarn Garuga doesn't quite hold the same place in my heart as Kutku does, but it's a great monster and definitely goes in the AT. Next up, a white Velociprey. Wait, wait, no, sorry. The, uh, Gyadrome. I honestly have absolutely no strong feelings about this monster. Outside of what I said for Velocidrome, Gendrome, and Iodrome, there's a certain amount of nostalgia that makes me kind of like them, but they're nothing outstanding. Gendrome is the worst one, and I don't hate Gyadrome as much as that, so it sort of just defaults into the B tier, I think. Now, onto a monster that I believe deserves a fresh coat of paint in a newer game, as we haven't seen it in a mainline series since Freedom Unite. The poor guy didn't even get a chance in Generations. I'm talking, of course, about the Hypnocker tries. The only time you really came across it was the first introduction to G-Rank in that game, and it sort of set a nice middle ground for a decently challenging monster without really being menacing or scary. It exhibits personality and actually looks a lot just like a giant bird, which is ironically quite rare in the bird wyvern class these days. Its unique appearance, animations, and how much I love Freedom Unite all contribute to me being a big Hypnocotrice fan. And whilst not one of my absolute favorites, it's easily an AT bird wyvern. Alright, so now it's third gen time, baby, and out the gate we get a look at an arguably much better execution of the raptor bird wyverns, and the first group is of course the jaggies. With the smaller Jaggy and Jaggier being led by the Great Jaggy, it was the first time the whole pack aspect felt properly realized. The Great Jaggy will howl and bark orders to change the spawns and attacks of its smaller counterparts, and the visual design is quite striking too, with bright purples and oranges making it a memorable first monster in try. I prefer the bulkier nature of these guys, I think it works well. Great Jaggy is also the only monster I've ever kicked to death, and it keeps getting forgotten when they bring back other similar monsters in newer games, so I feel like it's owed an AT placement. Next are the Baggies, very similar similar in design to the Jaggies, and yet somehow they still feel entirely unique. Subverting the expectation of a monster in an ice map using the ice elements by giving them sleep is a nice touch, and I think the design of their head lends to a more menacing and cooler look compared to the more approachable Jaggies. The lack of larger females called like Baggia or something seems like a missing element on the surface, but I think it makes more sense that all the standard Baggies are small and fast given that they need to survive in a more hostile environment. Overall, I think I prefer Baggies over Jaggies slightly, but I wouldn't say it's enough to put them in a whole other tier. A tier as well. And rounding out the trio, who could forget the Roggies. Introduced slightly after Jaggy and Baggy, the Roggies made their debut in Portable 3rd, and honestly, I think they're a pretty interesting design. The Roggies actually feel 
feel like a proper realization of what the devs originally wanted the Iodrome to be. This bulky, leather-skinned monster with a huge toxin sack adorning its throat, the Great Roggy is a bit of an odd sight at first and may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it rounds out the group well and is unique enough that it remains memorable. It also goes alongside its pals and gets itself in the AT. Alright, so the placement of this next one might be a little obvious if you've watched my most recent video, and I might retread some of the same ground, but I'm going for it anyway. I'm talking about the absolute best flying bird wyvern there is, the Kurapeka. Few other monsters come to mind that have the same amount of personality and character baked into their visuals and animations as the Kurapeko does. It dances around as it sings its little songs, it bobs its head to a non-existent beat as it walks, it flees when it's frightened, and it has one of the most unique mechanics in the game in the form of its mimicry. Kurapeko is a real treat to verse at the start of the third gen games, and is a great introduction to large monsters beyond just itself as well, as it summons things like the Rathian. It's a real shame that we haven't seen it since in the main series games, but for now, Kurapeko is easily an S-tier bird wife. And then we have the goddamn Gargoyle. Before making this list, I genuinely had no idea that Gargoyle was considered a bird wyvern. I mean, it makes sense, of course, and I suppose I should have known it, but I just assumed they were just lumped into the herbivore class with everything else. Anyway, Gargoyles are neat, I suppose. They fill the role of Aptonoth in the maps they're actually featured in, and are pretty silly for the most part. They're a nice quirky little monster to randomly come across, and it kind of feels bad to kill them because they're really cute, but I don't really feel that strongly about them. They're fine, I could take them or leave them. BT. All right, all right, all right. Let's cut the crap. It's time to talk about the monster that is not only the best raptor bird wyvern, but my absolute favorite bird wyvern overall. And that, of course, is Monster Hunter Generation's very own Great Macau. That's right, my favorite bird wyvern is one of the basic ass, no element early game ones, except. Macau isn't basic. The most colorful raptor bird wyvern, both literally and figuratively, Macau is vibrantly yellow and orange and green and mostly covered in feathers, which is an aesthetic I just like a whole lot more than like scaly dinosaurs, Jurassic Park style. On top of that, its animations and attacks are what really sell it to me. It has this frantic, hyperactive personality to it as it bounces around on its tail and screams at you before launching its attacks. It's just a really neat, well-handled design for such an early game monster, and also its theme slaps and just multiplies everything I just said in every way. Macau goes at the top of the S tier and is my favorite bird wyvern in the entire Monster Hunter series. All right, speaking of cool monsters, let's not gloss over one of the most unique and bird-like bird wyverns of them all, Malfestio. Malfestio is another example of a bird wyvern rising up the ranks a little bit in terms of difficulty, sitting around the four-star mark from my memory. Its design motif is clearly an owl and sort of a court jester thing going on, and it even has parts of its sound design where it hoots, which is just delightful. I can't deny how great a design it is visually, but unfortunately, I don't really enjoy fighting it. The status effects it uses are just kind of annoying, especially if you get hit by the confusion which inverts your controls, and honestly, that's the only thing holding Malfestio back from the S tier in my book, but he definitely fits very snugly in the A tier. And so, we've made it to the 5th generation, and I'll be honest, the 5th gen bird wyverns don't really wow me as much as the previous generations do. Kicking off this set of newer monsters is Kuliaku. Now, as I've said, I love a monster with personality, and Kuliaku has it in spades. Its vacant expression and easily timid demeanor make for a fun monster to watch move around, but it's just a bit boring visually to me, and doesn't stand out as a particularly strong design in my mind. Having the head of a dodo and leaning into the concept of an egg-stealing monster is great, and earned at some points, but Kuliaku is a pretty middle-of-the-road B-tier monster to me. And then we get to Monster Hunter World's most forgettable monster, except for maybe the Great Jiros, and that is the Ziziyaku. I just don't like it, man, and I think it's easily the worst designed monster in World, if not the worst designed bird wyvern out of them all. Its visual design is so painfully generic for Monster Hunter's standards, and if it wasn't for its flash tentacle things on its head, I wouldn't even think it was a Monster Hunter monster. It's also not at all enjoyable to fight, and yeah, sorry if you're a Ziziyaku fan, but he's a D-tier bird wyvern in my book. It probably goes at the very bottom, even below Gypsurus. Sorry. All right, I think this list has been pretty tame, pretty standard on my takes, so this may or may not be a hot take. We'll soon see. On to Puke Puke. Feeling the same role as the likes of Kutku and Kurapeko before it, Puke Puke shows up early on as a goofy little creature and may or may not be some people's first wall. And... I also just don't like it, man. I can't exactly put my finger on why, but Puke Puke has never done it for me. It's not like it croots me out or I think it's a particularly bad fight or whatever. I just don't like it, and I never have. Which is kind of weird because it's got plenty of personality, which is usually something that makes me really like a monster, 
but it is what it is, I suppose. Pico Pico goes in the C tier, I'm afraid. And now onto the most recent game in the form of Monster Hunter Rise. And a return to the pack-based Raptor Bird Wyverns after World departed from the trend with the Azuchi. Significantly less reptilian or bird-like, the Azuchi are pretty interesting designs that derive like most Rise monsters from Japanese yokai. Azuchi is based on the Kame Itachi, which is like a weasel with sickles for hands that flies around in tornadoes, and you know what? Azuchi is a pretty decently adapted monster for such a wild motif, I'd say. It's certainly not my favorite though, and doesn't get my nostalgia goggles going because of how recent it was introduced, and also, it ain't based on a bird. I know that's probably nitpicky and I didn't make the same point about like Puke Puke being a chameleon, but it feels like it deviates just a bit too far away from the raptor or bird inspirations for me, so it's going in the B tier. Next, we have the Boggy, introduced in Sunbreak and exclusive to the Citadel, and like, Come on, look at these little dickheads. Basically just the devs' excuse to put goblins in Monster Hunter, the Boggy are pretty neat and fun designs, but they kind of feel redundant, don't you think? They have no element or gimmick and are largely non-existent as threats given they are master rank exclusives, and their hyena motif doesn't really feel like it belongs in the Citadel map either. To top it off, they don't have an alpha monster form, like most folks probably expected them to, and as such, they sort of feel like a waste of potential. They also go in the B tier. And last but not least is probably 5th gen's best executed bird wyvern, and that is of course... Aknesom. Filling the same role as Puke Puke before it, Aknesom feels like it's better in every single way. It has a striking design with its huge head crest and broad wings, all of which plays into the yokai it's based on, which is basically a living umbrella. It has a series of animations where it wraps itself in its wings and hops around, as well as this floating glide as it rains fire from above. It's also considerably more difficult than previous iterations of this trope to compensate for Ryze's mobility, which is a nice touch, and on top of everything, it's a fun fight. Aknesom gets an A-tier placement from me. And so, there it is. The ultimate bird wyvern tier list is complete, and 100% factual and true, and not a single placement up for debate or contention. Bird wyverns are a neat and crucial staple to the Monster Hunter series. They bridge the gap between gathering and hunting, and they are an ever-present force throughout the entire game in almost every single instance. They breathe a lot of character and personality into the game and counterbalance some of the more serious late-game monsters very well, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Keep the silly little birds coming, Capcom. It may be one of my favorite tropes as a whole that Monster Hunter has. And with the tier list done, so is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Let me know your favorite and least favorite bird wyverns in the comments down below, and I'll catch you on the next video. See you later.